Bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, Last Outrider here with a comparison video. What I think of Riot's Arcane versus Games Workshop's Warhammer Plus. This is obviously two companies in a very similar situation with a very different approach on how to handle their IPs. Um, let's start with Arcane. Then I'll finish with GW. Okay, so there's a lot to say about Arcane. But for me, there's two very important topics. First is the animation style. Everybody thinks that this is unique and created by... Relic for the for for Arcane, and it's not. It was actually first pioneered back in 1978 with a little movie called Lord of the Rings. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, this is where you had live action animated over Arcane with 30 years. <laughs> um, improved upon that and now have animated live action with some 3D CGI thrown in. But all of those detailed impossible to animate features, that uh, aspect of the animation, that was all seen in the 1978 version of uh, Lord of the Rings. Go watch it. You can go right now on YouTube and watch The Death of Boromir from the 1978 movie, which was one of, for me at the time, <clears throat> one of those uh, very, very emotional mm, scenes for me that hit me really hard at the time because of the extract, uh, expressions that were captured in it. It was also one of the reasons that I could never get behind Steve Jackson's version of Lord of the Rings. The style and coloring was just too different from uh, the original The Hobbit, then The Lord of the Rings, then The Return of the King. That was the story for me. And then he came out with this different vision which just didn't work for me so <clears throat> watched it once and that's about it the next big thing about arcane is jinx and this is kind of personal for me because jinx and I remember season zero and season one of League of Legends. Jinx was most definitely based on Tank Girl. From her weapons, to her mannerisms, to her speaking, to her style of clothes, everything <clears throat> was clearly Tank Girl and nobody questioned this at the time. But Tank Girl has moved out of the mainstream. League of Legends, or uh, for the most part, has stayed in it. So now everybody's like, it's Harley Quinn! No, it's not fucking Harley Quinn. Okay? It's like... It's like... 80% uh, Tank Girl with 20% Harley Quinn is really what we have here. The, the voice and the kind of mania and uh, now the pale white and again chemically induced skin tone that I would I would say came from Harley Quinn but everything else combat style weapons like I said fashion sense um, that's all tank girl 
and uh, people need to take time to look that up and see that. And Tank Girl is not dead, I am happy to say. Okay? I was just reading King Tank Girl, which is the latest series that came out by uh, 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 um, Jason Hewitt. And, spoiler alert if people didn't know it, Margot Robbie, since she can't take over Harley Quinn, obviously, uh, the Ray Wild Ryan Reynolds has taken over Deadpool, is... She has her own movie production company, if you didn't know this. And being UK-based, she definitely does know who Tank Girl is. And she bought the, the movie rights to Tank Girl. And they were working on her being Tank Girl. In another movie, another, it was supposed to be. They were working. Well, they started. It was a. It was talked about in 2019. It was stalled in 2020, obviously for COVID. It was supposed to go back in to action again in 2021. It's been stalled again now because of this fucking Omicron variant in 2022. It's stalled again, and now they're just saying they're going to wait until COVID is is done. But it's not dead. It's just sleeping. Margot Robbie, for my intrepid viewers, will be Tank Girl in the future. And she will put Harley Quinn to shame. And suddenly, everybody will go back to thinking, hey, Jinx is Tank Girl. You heard it here. Look forward to it. <coughs> As for the story, um, this is where Riot and Marvel are very similar. And it shows that Marvel got it right. Riot let their creative director write the series. And this is a guy who isn't was has never been involved in TV show or movie writing. He's creative director for the characters in the game. And they let him pour it over. And this is what happened with Marvel. They let the writers, who even though they've never really been involved in movie making or anything like that, uh, uh, have a huge impact on the Marvel movies in terms of what is authentic. So, we can see that both of them have had the same success both with the fans and with people who aren't the fans in terms of introducing the characters letting the creative directors even though they're not in the film industry take over story creation for these IPs instead of giving it to experts quote unquote in the film industry like DC did for its movies works and the film experts suck. They just do. So, they took six years to create the Arcane storyline. Which really wasn't creating the Arcane storyline, but really creating the background characters for League of Legends. This isn't just for Arcane. It's, it's for the entire League of Legends universe. They fleshed out the universe of saying, what is League of Legends world really like? And they created their Bible, and then now they're going to go play in it in their world with Arcane. Uh, Game of Workshop, Games Workshops, sorry, decided not to go this route. Probably because it takes too much work, and Games Workshop tends to be on the more, let's do the shotgun approach and just create, I think they originally announced 12 series is going to come out on Warhammer Plus and see what works instead of really sitting down and focusing on a, a, a single worldview backstory. Now, hopefully this ran this rubbed up off on Games Workshop. With the success of Arcane, they might look at that and go, "Hmm. 
maybe we could do that. Maybe we should just sit down and really focus on, instead of as many stories as possible, one really good story. And the thing that comes to my head is I think this exact same thing could be done with uh, the stories that were in Warhammer Monthly, if you're old enough to remember that. Like Blood Quest and Ethereal Stern. I'd also like to see Dwarf Lords, but I guess fantasy is dead now. Um, Cal Jericho. They have those storylines, very well fleshed out, detailed storylines already in existence. And instead of going down that line, they went down the line of Angels of Death. Just kind of shallow, you know, bolter porn. Which is kind of disappointing. But maybe this changes their mind. Same thing with The Witcher, right? They had the storyline and they're going more in depth into that with Season 2. So hopefully... Somebody at Games Workshop is watching, and maybe they're going to go to their creative director and let them take over something and bring something to screen, which they didn't let them do in, in Warhammer Plus. And we will see, you know, uh, season one of Blood Quest. Would that be where they put in the money and the effort and the time the way uh, Riot did with Arcane? That would be awesome. That would bring Games Workshop and 40K into the mainstream. Better than what their, their plan, their business plan for doing that now. Ethereal Stern, even more so. Um, she, yeah, wow. The Demano Fugue. If, if, if they just took those two just those two storylines and pumped all of the budget and all of their talent into bringing those into two high quality shows 40k would be a mainstream title the monofugue and uh blood quest would be and if you if you want to go crazy throw in titanicus uh, for the Pacific Rim uh, uh, fans. Those three would have been enough. But they're going to, you know, they're going to do, they're, they're, they're do their thing. And we're we're going to see if that works. So that is what I think and my comparison of what's going on. And as always, see you next time. Bye. <laughs>